Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today, we have Spencer Becker with us, a PhD candidate from Iowa State University under Dr. Laura Greiner. So Spencer, do you mind telling us about these studies that you ran? Absolutely. Before we get started, I would like to thank the FFAR grant as well as the National Report Board for funding of my dissertation research. So when I was starting my dissertation, I really wanted to focus on gill development nutrition as that's an area of research that um, we do need some more information in. And to look at this, we decided to investigate uh, fatty acids within uh, swine nutrition. So in order to accomplish, investigate uh, fatty acids, we took a two-prong approach and that was first looking at the fatty acid ratios, as well as the energy level, and then looking at fatty acid ratios and then the level of linoleic acid. And a lot of this work stems off of uh, work in sows that uh, Dr. David Rosero um, did within lactation. So my first study, our objective was to investigate the effects of dietary metabolizable energy and the ratio of linoleic acid to linolenic acid or N6 to N3 on growth performance, inflammation, as well as joint health of these grow finished pigs. And so we utilized a high and a low energy diet um, and then two ratios of 23 to one and 12 to one in the first study. And then we fed these pigs, these diets for 12 weeks. Um, with over these 12 weeks, we found that a high energy diet did increase uh, final body weight and average daily gain and reduce feed intake as expected. Um, with this, we saw that this was true regardless of the ratio that was fed. Um, interestingly, we did see that the barrows and gilts that received a low dietary fatty acid ratio had a similar final body weight, um, as well as looking at in with this, we saw that overall systemic and localized inflammatory markers were reduced over time. So localized within that joint fluid that we collected at the beginning and the end of the study. And then we also looked at different um, markers of how the fat is being metabolized within the pig. And we saw as expected again that um, the low fat diets had increases in uh, markers of fatty acid synthesis. Um, as we would expect. Um, additionally, um, we saw that with this, that the differing fatty acid ratios can be fed um, independent of the energy level. Um, and then, as I mentioned, a really interesting part of that first study was that we found fatty acid ratios can differentially impact growth of barrows and gills. Gotcha. So when you saw these increase in inflammation markers, um, for the high fat diets. Um, was that by like a significant amount? Do you see any like um, issues resulting from that? So we fed pretty high levels of fat. So about 3.55 mcals per kilo or about uh, five to 6% added fat over a 12 week time. And studies in humans would suggest that prolonged periods of high fat intake would also result in increases in levels of systemic inflammation. So comparing uh, literature across species, it wasn't necessarily something unexpected. And so you also did a second study that seemed fairly um, similar to this one. Do you mind kind of telling me about the setup with that, the differences in the diets with that one? Correct. So the second study, we utilized a three by two factorial. And so we looked at the essential fatty acid ratios again, but instead of energy level, we looked at differing levels of linoleic acid based off of previous research in pigs as well as other species um, with the goal of alleviating maybe inflammatory status within these animals. So we used, utilized three different uh, fatty acid ratios, uh, high, moderate, and the that were the high and the moderate were similar to the first study. And then we did a low fatty acid ratio um, added on to the first study. And then we kept energy the same within these diets. And then we fed either 30 grams uh, per kilo or high 
linoleic acid or low linoleic acid at 15 grams per kilo. Um, study was set up exactly the same way where we fed it um, to both barrows and gilts across the 12 week phase. Um, within this study, we saw that 15 grams, so low linoleic acid, as well as the lower, so a four to one essential fatty acid ratio tended to improve final pig body weight. Additionally, we saw that uh, gilts receiving the higher fatty acid ratio had increased final body weight compared to gilts receiving the low and moderate ratio, similar to that of barrows. Um, additionally, we saw um, within our inflammatory markers that we had decreased inflammation with those um, pigs fed the high dietary uh, linoleic acid um, with no differences in our uh, lipid metabolism that we evaluated. Um, however, we did see that the ratios, again, can alter um, genes associated with how fatty acids are um, taken up into the body and transported. So based on the information that you got from the study, what do you think the results kind of tell um, nutritionists and producers to do with diet formulation? Uh, I think my studies are really a good jumping off point for our industry to do more fatty acid research. I think um, the fact that we saw in two different studies that barrows and gilts grew similarly, um, depending on the, the treatment, um, I think that's definitely an area to explore more if we can uh, fine tune the fatty acid formulation in terms of growth, um, as well as pulling in inflammation into that. I think that could be a really exciting opportunity for nutritionists. Gotcha. And do you plan on doing any more research in this field at ISU? Um, so my time at Iowa State is actually um, quickly coming to an end. I will be graduating here within a few months. So um, my animal work is done, but hopefully um, within Dr. Greiner's group, uh, they'll continue uh, investigating this research area. All right. Well, congratulations on your uh, upcoming graduation. Um, and thank you for coming on the show. Um, and to everyone else, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Don't forget to follow us and subscribe to our podcast channels and visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it and share with us, feel free to send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Oh.